Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the next lab of EC270 Embedded Logic Design Monsoon 2021 semester. Uh, from the previous lab, we moved from the FPGA to the Zinc SOC. And in the previous lab, we discussed how to program the ARM processor in the Zinc SOC via SDK. So in this lab, we will try to uh, have the communication between the ARM processor and the APJ via AXI interface via simple example. So as discussed during the lectures, uh, as well as the previous lab, in the Zinc SOC, you have two part. One part is your processing system, which is your PS. It is nothing but the dual core ARM processor. And the second part is your PL, which is the programmable logic, which is nothing but your seven series FPJ. We have already discussed the detailed architecture of the FPJ. And uh, in the lecture, we are discussing about the detailed architecture of your dual core Cortex A9 ARM processor. Inside the processing system, you have two interfaces. One interface is to the memory, uh, which is the external memory where your program is stored, as well as you can store the large amount of data. In addition to the external memory, you may have the on-chip memory here and cache memory to support the high-speed uh, data storage. A processor can communicate with the outside world via peripherals like UART, Ethernet, SD card, and so on. In the previous lab, we have used the UART interface so that we can display the messages on the UART terminal. In addition, the ARM processor communicates with the FPJ via AXI peripherals or AXI interface. Uh, we have discussed the basics of the AXI interface, the types of the AXI interface, and in the few lectures, uh, we will discuss about the uh, more details about this AXI interface in the um, uh, or Zinc SOC. So uh, the main objective of this lab is to uh, have something in the FPJ as well as in the PS and establish the communication between the uh, both via AXI interface and using the ILA understand the different aspects of the AXI transaction. Okay, so if you are uh, well versed with the theory of the AXI read write transaction, uh, you will be able to correlate with the to today's lab. So specifically, what we are going to do is that we are going to have the uh, block RAM memory inside your FPJ, and using the uh, ARM processor, we are going to perform the uh, read and write transaction in the uh, block RAM memory. Uh, here I have also shown the GPIO. So usually during the physical semester, we also use this GPIO, which is nothing but the general purpose input output, where you can connect the switches, uh, you can connect the push buttons, and you can connect the LEDs and you can display the data on those LEDs or you can take the status of the push button and switches and display on the UART. So during the physical semester, when you have access to the physical board, you can do it. But in the online semester, we have modified the lab so that you can complete the lab without needing physical access to the board. So this part is not needed. So we are focusing on this part. And as we have discussed during the lecture, uh, the block RAM itself doesn't have the AXI interface, okay? So we need to use the AXI block RAM controller. So what it does, it takes the AXI uh, interface as an input. So it can uh, take the read and the write transaction and converts into the language, which can be identified, uh, which can be uh, understood by this block RAM memory in terms of the address, data, read, uh, uh, the write enable signal, clock signal, and so on, okay? So that is the um, task of the AXI block RAM controller. So AXI block RAM controller converts the AXI uh, signals from the AXI interface to the non-AXI uh, interface. Uh, this is your ARM processor where you will write your C code, and then that will be converted into a set of instructions, and those instructions will be executed 
one by one. Now, when the ARM processor wants to communicate with the block RAM, suppose it wants to do the right transaction in the block RAM, what it does, it, it uh, uh, generates, uh, it calls to the appropriate drivers. And these drivers then in turn generates the appropriate AXI transaction. And uh, as you know that we need to use the AXI interconnect because we know that the ARM processor works on the AXI3 protocol while the FPGA works on the AXI4 protocol. So the conversion is needed. The second thing is that ARM processor works at the higher clock frequency while the FPGA works at the lower clock frequency. So the clock domain uh, conversion is also needed. So this is taken care by the AXI interconnect. Okay, so inside the, any uh, uh, Zinc SOC, we know that you have the ARM processor and you have the FPGA. And the ARM processor communicates with the multiple peripherals uh, using their address. So for every unit, suppose you have the uh, FFT IP here, you have the uh, block RAM IP here. So for the PS, every unit is nothing but a, 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 some IP with the starting address and the ending address. So for block RAM, whether the FFT, for the processor PS, the FFT, block RAM are identical. Only the difference is that for every IP, there is a particular starting address and there is a particular ending address. Okay, so for the processor, it doesn't care about the what type of peripheral is there. For example, even for the UART, there will be one starting address and the one is the ending address. So for the processor, UART, FFT, block RAM are all the same peripherals, except that they have the different addresses. And then the ARM processor, via the instruction, perform the read and write transactions with the peripheral. And such kind of systems are called as a memory mapped IO. What is the memory mapped IO? That means your all the peripherals are memory mapped. So for every peripheral in your system, there is a particular address set of addresses are given to that particular peripheral. And the processor communicates with that uh, uh, IP or the peripherals via those set of address. So that's why for every peripheral inside the system, it's like a memory for the processor. It has some set of address that is starting address to the end address. So for example, in case of the Zinc SOC, you will see that the for the external memory, DDR memory, there is a particular start address is given. Then for any IP inside the FPJ, you will see that your addresses will start with the 0x4, 0x6, and 0x8. How to see this address, I'll show you in the lab. Then uh, you, you can see that these are your UART peripheral, Ethernet peripheral, SD card interface, Ethernet interface, so that there is a particular set of addresses are given to them. And then inside the processor also, you have PS also, you have different timers, DMAs, uh, uh, different multiple time watchdog timers for also some fixed addresses have been given. Suppose, suppose processor wants to start a particular time timer, timer a uh, processor will use that particular address to communicate with that particular timer. Similarly, there is on-chip memory and the flash memory. So every unit or every peripheral or every IP inside the SOC, some set of addresses are given and the processor use those address to communicate with that IP. So more about the memory map IO we'll discuss in the lecture. So for example, if you go inside the Vivado, in, you see, will see that all, along with the diagram, you will have this address editor. And inside that address editor, you will see that there is a particular address has been given. And based upon the memory requirement of that IP, there is a corresponding end address is known. For example, suppose that the IP, uh, suppose the starting address of the IP is zero, and the IP needs only two address. So the ending address will be one because zero one. So suppose that the starting address of the IP is say 0, 0, 0, and the IP needs say four locations. So the ending address will be 0, 1, 1. So these are the four locations of the IP. So, so this is how the addresses are assigned. So what is the logic behind this one? How these addresses are assigned? And there is a particular some set of rules are there. We will discuss those rules and we will discuss the corresponding uh, theory behind the memory map IO in the 
lecture. Okay, so these things you need to uh, understand that for every IP inside the uh, uh, FPJ or AD peripheral inside the SOC, you will have the specific address assigned to it. And the processor use that address to communicate with the corresponding peripherals. So let's take the simple example. Suppose that uh, I have this uh, uh, Zinc SOC where I have this PS and on this FPJ, there are four IOs and uh, on those IOs, I have connected the four LEDs. Okay, so this is my LED one, LED two, LED three and LED four. So you can see that this LED, you can display one or zero. One means it is on, zero means it is off. Okay, so that is the input to this LED. So uh, suppose that I want my PS, which is the ARM processor, to communicate with the uh, LED and display the such data. Like in after in say, uh, it, it will begin with one zero zero one, which corresponds to this one. Then zero one one zero, say after say uh, uh, say one second, and then it will go back to this one after one second, and this will continue. So in a loop, it will switch between the two values. Suppose I want to do that. So what I'll need uh, from the ARM processor, I need a, a write instruction to the LED. So what I'll do, I'll first write the 1001, I'll wait for one second, and then I'll write a 00, 0110, and then I'll do the such thing in the continuous manner. So I'll have the write transaction with the AXI. But this LED doesn't understand the right AXI transaction because they only know one or zero. So what you will need, you will need some IP, which we call as a general purpose IO IP. It will take the AXI as a uh, input and it will uh, convert that AXI into the native uh, values, one or zero values, okay? So this is the AXI GPI, GPIO, general purpose input output IP. IP. And uh, you can see that uh, here I have the ARM processor. Here I have this AXI interconnect. Now you know why we need an AXI interconnect. Here I have this AXI GPIO, and this is connected to my LED. So here you can see that there is an AXI port, and here you have the non-AXI port, that is the native port. So this takes the AXI transaction and converts into the non-AXI values, okay? So for example, suppose I, uh, uh, suppose I want to display 1001. So what I'll do is, I'll, uh, and uh, there will be one, say, uh, register here, okay? So this register will say that the address is A of that register, okay? So what the ARM processor will do, it will do the AXI write, it will do the address at the address A, 1001. So this is your C code, some command in the C code. In this, in, in term will be converted into the AXI uh, write transaction. And what is the AXI write transaction? In the AXI write transaction, first you will send the address over the address uh, write and control bus. Then you will send the data on the write and uh, on the address, uh, sorry, on the write data bus. And then you will get the response from the GPIO after the writing is successful on the uh, AXI write response bus. And all this transaction we will be seeing in your lab. Okay, so instead of the GPIO, we'll be doing with the bleak block ramp, but we, we should be able to see this AXI transaction using the IN. Okay, and again, as I told you, for every IP, to for this processor to communicate with this IP, there is a particular address is being assigned. You can use the same concept to make a more complex design. So for example, here I have connected my button, here I have connected the block RAM, here I have connected to the switches and the LED, and you can display the content of the switches on the LED, content of the buttons on the LED, and vice versa. So a lot of things you can do, or you can display the block RAM data on the LED, but how this will work? Your processor will perform the read transaction on the button, and then processor will perform the write transaction on the LED, so that the button data will get displayed on the LED. Suppose you want to display the data from the block RAM on the LED. So, but uh, uh, ARM processor will perform the read transaction from the block RAM from the particular address, and then the ARM processor will perform the write transaction on the LED. So, this is how the you can 
communicate the data. But here, everything, all the decisions are taken care by the processor. So you can see that the processor is nothing but the controller. And this unit, you can call it as a data path. So as we have discussed the, in the previous lecture, any complex digital system design is divided into the two paths, controller and data path. Controller is usually implemented in the FSM and the data path is in the combinational and the registers. And as the system becomes more and more complex, uh, implementing the FSM using the uh, uh, very low code becomes challenging. And what you do, you move this FSM, you implement this FSM using the pro processor and your processor becomes the controller of your embedded system. Okay. So coming back to the specific aspects of the uh, today's lab, as we know, we are going to do, uh, we are not going to do this GPIO, we are going to do the block RAM, this one. In addition, what we are going to do, we are going to use the ILA. You already know what is this ILA. Uh, one thing we are going to use is that we are going to use the system ILA because a system ILA can take the AXI as well as the non-AXI interface. So what we are going to do, we are going to use the system ILA where we'll connect this AXI port, uh, this one here, and then we also take the this port here. And what we are going to do, we are going to see this AXI transactions read and write transaction and how this data is communicated over the channels, as well as how this AXI transaction is converted into the non-AXI data. So that the data is particularly written on the read from the block domain. So this is what we are going to do in our, uh, um, uh, this today's lab. And uh, the rest of the handout, as well as the uh, video tutorial are already prepared by the TAs and that uh, you will see the more detail about the co uh, block diagram as well as the how to analyze the AXI transaction, you will see those uh, video uh, uh, after this uh, video. Okay, thank you.